we're in the middle of a very dark time here in the UK right now. And I wanted to just get this video out to, to just share some of my thoughts about what's going, where we're at really. Um, I, the, the saying that's going through my mind right now is, uh, is that is from a poem or, or a, some kind of short bit of literature from the 1940s in Nazi Germany where there's a, I think it was a Lutheran minister wrote it and it says something like, first they came, first they came for the socialists and I didn't do anything because I, I'm not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists. I didn't do anything because I'm not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I didn't do anything because I'm not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one left to help or something on those lines. And if there's anything that this last couple of weeks has taught me or us, hopefully it's taught a lot of us, is that while you might think that if you're opposed to Muslims and you're opposed to Pakistanis and, you know, Islam, the rise of Islam or whatever, you might think that, oh, that means that you're on the right side, that you're on the same side as these rioters, you're on the same side as the reform gang and Tommy Robinsons and so forth. You're not, these people, particularly the higher ups, they see all non-white people as intrinsically inferior to white people. That's what they think. They might use useful idiot black people and Asians to be their representatives and candidates and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, they will. GB News, there's that woman on GB News, a couple of these black people on GB News who are there basically prostituting themselves for, for to curry favour with right-wing white people. You know, there's vloggers on YouTube here who are here like chumming up to Tommy Robinson and this, that and the other because they think that they're on the same team. They think that, oh yeah, I am, I'm opposed to Islam. I don't want British culture to get taken over by Islam. Make British be British and all this sort of stuff. They, they foolishly, idiotically think that, you know, you'll be welcome in a society that's controlled by these people. You absolutely will not. Go and have a look at any video with, you know, to do with like any kind of crime that involves black people. And look at the comments underneath. They'll, you'll see what these people think about us. They think, yeah, look, this is, you know, look at Sadiq Khan's London. They talk about Sadiq Khan, but what they're really talking about is look at these black areas in London where crime is rife and gangs and this, that and the other. That's what they're talking about. And by the way, they're not bothered whether your, your surname is Thompson or whether your name is, you know, Ayodele or whatever. Or, or They're not bothered. They don't care where you come from. As long as you're black, you're black. That's what they think. They might say... You know, they might say that, yo, no, no, it's it's just the Muslim black people maybe we have problems with. But deep down, you know, I think you would be idiotically foolish to the extreme to think that you can ally with anyone who has this kind of hatred and, you know, toward Asians or Pakistanis or whatever. You're a f I think you're being very naive and very foolish if you think that you can, like, you know, be part of their crew because you can't, you know. Even this even applies to some of those some some Indians I see Sikhs and Hindus some not all some who think that oh yeah they can be like no these aren't Asians these are Pakistanis we're not them da, da, da. everyone's trying to be as someone said in one of my comments everyone's trying to be the model minority you know the model immigrants we're the good immigrants it's like guys we're all the bloody same to these people they will use Pakistanis they will use you know. They will use certain uh, negative behaviour on the part of Pakistanis and, and Muslims to... Uh, it's a thin end of the wedge though, isn't it? So their acts, the thin end of that wedge is that they're the first targets. But then they will very quickly move on to you and I. And this is what we're seeing. As Filipino nurses being bricked in, in Sunderland, there's black people's shops being torched in Belfast, there's black people being attacked. Various non-white people being attacked and beaten up. I saw footage in Middlesbrough, I think it was, where a gang of youths were basically asking, blocking the road and asking people, are you white? Before they could drive through. And, you know, this is, this is where we're at. Do not be foolish. Don't be fooled. Fascism, these fascists, these right-wing people, particularly those at the top, absolutely see you as subhuman, as I, I might have said already. But, you know, hopefully, hopefully this will give a lot of people pause for thought as we've as i'm seeing on my videos there there is a lot of factionalism and sectarianism amongst, amongst black people in this country I've, uh, what i've come to realize is that the the black britain of the 1990s where we were generally unified generally together you know 
we knew our common interest. We knew that, as Malcolm X put it, that, you know, when the police are after you, they're not interested whether you're Caribbean or Christian or Muslim or whatever. They're just after you because you're black. We understood those things. And we were also informed by some wonderful, beautiful music coming from the likes of, you know, mainly from Jamaica, actually. But even the US, you know, conscious hip hop of that era, you know, the likes of Peter Tosh, Bob Marley, Burning Spear. We, we had that level of consciousness of black unity. The migration that has come over the last 20 years or so from Nigeria, predominantly, also Somalia. I think what we've had is a like people coming in who don't have that racial racial solidarity, generally speaking, and then their children clearly don't have that racial solidarity. They don't even have the knowledge of history. They have, don't, don't have a knowledge of black history in this in this country. And so we, there's a real level of ignorance. I keep seeing people from the Caribbean and their descendants talking about how they, you know, they went to uni and they were, they were a minority, mainly surrounded by uh, black people from the continent. And these black people from the continent made them feel unwelcome, which is just, flat, for me, it's flabbergasting. Bearing in mind my background, my history, my upbringing being essentially one of the you know one of the one of the minority within the minority you know black people there are plenty of african black people going way back to the 1940s quite I mean, a groomer came here for you know to study for a while i think but many 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 communities here you know going way back in decades gone past through the whole windrush era and so forth but they were a minority the, the those from the caribbean were a majority up to about the year 2000 and since then, it's like that whole history has been lost. People are unaware of it. People are ungrateful, it seems. They're either ignorant of or they, they're ungrateful for the fact that the space that's been created in this country for black people to feel safe and able to live our lives and whatnot was in the main created by black people from the Caribbean, you know. And I personally, I'll always give my flowers to these people because they are the ones who, I, when I was growing up and I was seeing you know, Alf Garnet and It Ain't Half Hot Mum and all these TV programs where like, with like open ra racist tropes and so forth. And, you know, what's his name? Uh, Davidson, Jim Davidson, like making, talking about Chalky and, you know, making blatantly racist jokes. It was in general, black people from the Caribbean who pushed back against that, fought against that. It's them or the, the ones mainly who organized the Black People's Day of Action. They're the ones who came up with the, the Saturday schools network to deal with the fact that their children were being not even just their children also black african children also south asian children were being disproportionately labeled as being educationally educationally subnormal so they set up the saturday school network which educated black children and gave that level of consciousness which has sadly died off as the it seems that as the black community has become much more dominated by more recent arrivals from the continent the level of political consciousness has absolutely plummeted and you know, we had, I'll talk about this in a future video, we had Choice FM, we had The Voice newspaper, we had The New Nation newspaper. Where are our black, you know, uh, publications and whatnot? Where are they? They're gone. You know why? Because a lot of the people who are now here don't even see themselves as black, per se. You know, they don't see themselves as really having much in common with other black people. And as a result, as as the good brother Lux, Max, uh, Lux Maxin, Introvert Maxing said in you know in his recent live stream that he did. Now we're here, fragmented, dis you know dispersed, having no solidarity with, with each other, no organisational base, no no experience in political organising and so forth because we've just been on this stupid sectarian BS or hyper assimilationist nonsense. And now here we are. We're you know we're we're in the face of this potential targets for these 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 rioters these right wing rioters and we've got nothing so maybe i hope that this will be a little bit of a wake up call for many of our people that well, yeah be proud about your your heritage be proud about where your you were born or where your family was born and be proud of it absolutely don't forget any of this stuff and also yes we have very real grievances between each other that need dealing with a lot of ignorance a lot of hostility a lot of nonsense that, that needs dealing with but while we we won't address those by just staying in our little gangs and we certainly won't be able to organize our communities and defend ourselves and, and build anything by just focusing on our little tribalistic you know national gangs that that, that we want to be part of. We, 
I'll just end by saying this. We want to cuss out our young people for getting involved in gangs and, you know, the postcode wars and whatever, whatever. We're just doing the same thing. But it's just our gangs are Nigerian, Ugandan, Ghanaian, Jamaican, Trini, Bayesian. That's our gangs. We're just as bad as our youth. In fact, our youth... Uh, Taurus Riley's got a song called The Children Are pre We," And this song lays it all out. If you were to point a finger at anybody for the, the predicament that our young people are in, you know, point the finger at yourself, ourselves in the mirror. They learn from us. And perhaps in this instance, that sectarianism and factionalism is something that they've, you know, they see us doing as well in just a different form. But anyway, stay safe, everybody. Be safe, be alert, be well. And I'll see you next week for a proper, a, a more of a normal video that I'll upload on Monday. All right. Take good care of yourselves. Peace out. See you soon.